I'm going to talk about creating a database for literature review. And I'm doing this actually in Excel. And the reason I'm doing it is that it gets quite complicated when you're actually doing a literature review. You'll read an article and then you'll highlight all the key points that you want to make. And then you'll read another one and you'll get up to 20, 25 articles. And you're trying to bring all that stuff together and it gets really complicated. So I've come up with a method that has worked extremely well for me because I like to do very detailed literature reviews, so uh, I tend to get a lot of papers. So the first thing you might note here is that um, there's a summary section, so it's just a general summary of the paper. And then there's detailed points or a detailed review, so it's individual points. And these would have been areas that I highlighted in the paper or just points that I want to make. All right, and I'll talk about that a bit later in detail. So, in terms of the summary, I've created a number of columns here, and you can create your own columns. Um, uh, let me just explain some of the columns that I've created. So, the authors, I put in K, 2009. Um, if it's two authors, it's K and Kanak, 2007. If it's three, I don't like to write all the authors down, so I just put K et al, uh, comma, 2009. I like to specify the population. Uh, who was studied. And I've got a little coding scheme here. I also like to specify the sample size. A description, whether the description of the sample is adequate, whether there's um, gender, age, um, enough context so I know what the sample, uh, who, who was in the sample, what, uh, and, and specifically where it was from, those kinds of questions. I like to know whether the data collection tools were, li were reliable or valid, and I just put uh, a one for yes and a, and a zero for no. Um, might be different categories for qualitative research, but you want to be confident that the data collection method was was um, appropriate and collected good data. I like to put the subject area. Uh, it's relevant for a lot of papers. The type of paper, whether it's a survey data or qualitative or performance, sometimes it's a combination. Here it's 2-3, so it's survey and performance. Um, the literature review, I, I tend to rate that to see if it was good or not. Uh, in this case, I'm looking at attitudes and learning and whether there was a positive or negative effect on. That's very specific to my paper. You're going to have different headings here, but you'll get the idea. And then you put the purpose of the paper, the general one one sentence, maybe two, about the purpose of the paper. So that provides you with a good summary and it allows you to um, take a look at the method too to see what was offered. So you can quickly, if you sort by reliability, find out how many papers were reliable. You can get a range of the sample size. You can get an idea of the range of populations looked at, whether it was most work done with elementary students or not. And you can look at um, the subject area and the type of study. So you get an idea that you can give a general picture of what was looked at. And it, and it helps if you're actually trying to approve upon research because you can identify gaps, areas that need to be discussed. For example, maybe there's been no uh, articles done in science. So you can quickly identify it with the summary. Next, you want to go to the detailed review. What that involves is taking the areas that you've highlighted or the notes that you've made from a paper and then just organizing them by author, theme, sub-theme if you choose, and then the key details. So put the details. So in this case, it's K2009. The theme was attitude. The sub-theme, the attitude looked at was ease of use. So in this case, it says students' attitudes were positive with respect to ease of use of web-based learning tools. Um, the next one was engagement, the sub-theme, and learning. Now, attitude is a common theme, but there's a sub-theme within that. And finally, there was performance, uh, but no sub-theme. So you get the idea that you'll organize your papers under all these different themes and sub-themes. Sub so what happens is that so the next paper comes in and it has a different selection of, uh, of uh, categories or perhaps the same. And then you can sort by attitude uh, and sub-theme to find out the common what has commonly been said by all the authors about attitude or what's been said about by performance or whatever the category. 
So it really allows you to bring all the points you make on each paper into the detailed review. It's just excellent for actually then organizing your literature review afterwards because then you can look at your, your attitude um, theme, for example, maybe there's 20 points, and then you can look at all the points and you can create categories within your paper to talk about attitudes, to talk about performance, or whatever. Uh, it's a great way for organizing a paper. Okay, so that's the basic way of organizing and putting down points from a not lot of articles into a nice tidy spreadsheet.